And keep your eye on number one. That's Alyssa Usby, the top rebounder for the Tar Heels. That's right, Tom. And if it wasn't Deja Kelly as my player in the open, I was going to go with Alyssa Usby. She's the only player in the ACC in the top 25 in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks, Tom. She is another walking bucket for UNC. Had a double-double in their loss against Michigan at the Jumpman Invitational in Charlotte last week. Florida State in traveling black. North Carolina. Carolina blue and white. And we're rolling from Carmichael. Side of the rim along the baseline. It's going to stay at this end of the floor with the Seminoles. And true to Latson's nature, right away she got the ball and took it straight to the rim, passed it back out because UNC did a good job defending her and cutting off that lane. They beat their rival Miami 92-85. Last Wednesday, shot 52% as a team. That was a season high. And they got a three ball. Going long distance right away from Aaron Howard. Howard's just been shooting a lot of deep threes. Like, if there was a logo out here, she's hit a couple of those. But the three-point shooting just improved immensely for her for this Florida State team overall. Nobody's made more threes for Florida State this season than Aaron Howard. Now 26 on the year and 112 for her career. Must be cut off. Mid-range along the baseline. The patience on that shot. Ty Williams just gave her a little pump fake, got her in the air, and one dribble pull up. It's a good sign for Todd Williams, who missed all four of her three-point attempts in the most recent game for North Carolina, the loss against Michigan in Charlotte. This is inside the line for two for Todd Williams in the misfire. Keep it alive in the moments of our first quarter. The jetty, the entry pass, and the turnaround is two in the move from Timpson. Good move by KK Timpson down there. Just takes her time, doesn't even dribble the ball and take it in. She just turns around and does a nice little floater in the air. Hodgson on the drop. Is the best three point shooter for UNC. But you know what? If you cut her off and you don't close out that first step, well, she'll take it to the rack as well. And like in the open, multiple players who can score at multiple levels for both of these teams. And right here, they give it to Bajetti. Bajetti, nice pass on the entry. Notices she has two defenders and just turns around and says, Hey, I'm going to shoot over both of you guys. Nobody shoots a higher percentage of the ACC than Timpson. Knowles able to keep it alive in the corner with Latson. Timpson shoots 64%. Now, granted, she shoots close to the bucket, but makes 64% of the time, and that's a three-ball, Massengill. Coming all the way from Kentucky, where she transferred from, has just been a bright spot for Florida State, just meshes so well, the chemistry on the squad. Her 11th made three of the season. Usby wants a three. It was online, but short, and the rebound, Massengill. Go with some fancy dribbling. Dropped it off. Watson tried to hang and score, got it back. There was a whistle. Looked like Timpson got tangled up underneath and hit the deck. First, first year head coach. Now, back in 2021, she was the interim head coach. In place of Sue Semron. Had been on the staff for several years. 12th season coaching at Florida State for Wyckoff. Also played for Sue Simrau, so she is Miss Florida State. Who better to carry on the legacy of Sue than Brooke Wyckoff? And she scored over 1,300 points in her career as a seminal. Timpson able to gather it and score. Did you hear the little yell? She yelled at the end. I love the energy <laughs> coming from the post play right now. Both teams finding different options outside of Latson and Kelly to score. It's a six-point lead in the first quarter. Kelly, shot may have been deflected. And those want to run. Latson got tripped up on the kick. It goes out of bounds. And that'll be North Carolina basketball. And right now for UNC, they're looking at finding the rhythm as we see Courtney Banghart on the screen in her fourth season as the Tar Heels head coach with a record of 63 and 34. 65%, but excellent coach. Coached at Princeton before this. Got to work it inside and a chance for a three-point play. Anya Poole. Anya Poole is just another act.
active post. It does a good job with her body. She can take you off that one dribble, takes the contact from Timpson, and draws the foul. And that's the offense that UNC needed. Courtney Banghart telling us earlier that, you know, she wants her teams to get off to a quicker start, not have to get used to the rhythm of play. And that's a good offensive look for Anya Poole to get them started. Coach Banghart at the shoot around today, which Lee attended, also told us she challenged her team's toughness after the loss against Michigan. I challenged him too. I watched it on TV, and it was not the same UNC team. She said the same team. Team. She did not recognize her own team. Hodgson waiting for reinforcements. That's too strong off the glass and the miss from Poole. Three-point lead for the Knowles. They are 12 and 2 on the season. 1-0 in conference play. That win against Miami on December 21st. At home at the Tucker Center. Timpson had bounced out. Usby went up to grab it. She got fouled in the process. Valenzuela got a piece of Usby. First on Valenzuela. I love what I'm seeing in the post play from both teams. They're just allowing KK Timpson and Anya Poole to kind of go one on one at each other. And of course, we all know the attention is usually on Deja Kelly, Utsby, and then Ladson for Florida State. So I like what I'm seeing as far as the different options. North Carolina with its 9 and 2 record, number 13 in the nation. 6 and 0 at home this season. Usby on the drive and Timpson. Timpson recovered and knocked it out of bounds. Timpson is a shot blocker. She's top 10 in the ACC, second in block shots. And right here, Utsby goes up and goes for it. And Timpson says, uh-uh, not even in your house. Seven blocks per game for the Knowles, best in the ACC as a team. Cool. Around the defenders, knocked away. Latson might have got a piece of that. She did, she did. Latson got it from behind with the hang time, was able to turn her body in the air and block the shot from behind. And K.K. Timpson right there is having a field day on the interior and the post. Another two for her makes six in the game. Kelly has to bring it back out. We're inside of five minutes and 20 seconds to go in our first quarter. Miss on the drive from Hodgson. That's a three, and it's all net. Gordon hits a three for the Knowles. Omari Gordon, she can push the ball in transition, but you know what? That three-point shot, she's shooting 35.7% this season from beyond the arc, up from last season, and extending her role. As Eva Hodgson hits a three of her own, and she's the lead three-point shooter for this Tar Heel squad. So Hodgson now with five points, breaks through with a three. As Tabitha mentioned, that's her 30th. Made three of the season. She leads the team and makes and takes and shoots 50% from beyond the arc. Interior bucket, Valenzuela. And Courtney Banghart is yelling at her squad. Box out and rebound. Told us before the game that's something that she wants her, her squad to work on as Todd Williams' three doesn't go. A speed with the left hand. Softly off the glass for two. Can score at multiple levels, multiple players in Utsby. I just love the way she moves on the court. She's so agile, she's versatile, doesn't stand still, and right there, it looked like it could have been a broken play. Just cuts to the rim. First basket for Usby. Tied for ninth in the conference, 14 points per game. Austin Gill in traffic. Traveling violation. And so far, so good for Florida State. Latson right here finds Omari Gordon for the open three-point shot. And at the other end, Utsby gets the little runner to go. 17-12, Florida who just pushes the ball in transition, as well as Bajetti and Gordon. So they're shooting 50% so far tonight. It's early. We're in the first quarter. They shot 52% in the win against Miami and 60% from a three-point range. This is what North Carolina has to deal with, so Florida State continuing the momentum from the win against the Kings. Yeah, and that's not something they had consistently last season, but it's been consistent so far this year, and it's something they can rely on, but it's not the only thing they rely on. They also rely on their penetration, their transition, and their rebounding as well, and that's another key that Coach Wyckoff, both coaches said rebounding is going to be the key tonight. So far, Florida State has the advantage on the boards, 10-5. And 10-2 in second chance points for the Knowles. And that's where the difference in the game so far is coming in at its five-point differential. It bounces off. 
Unkind bounce here at Carmichael Arena. Gordon trying to work out of that corner. Latson tried to cross it over, lost the handle. Lusby came away with it. And good job defensively by the Tar Heels. You had Todd Williams, who's been tasked. And the ball's gonna stay this way in UNC's hand, but Todd Williams tasked with taking down the best player on the opposite team, caused the turnover on Ladson. Right now, it's Hodgson as the leading scorer with five points. That includes a three, trying to feed it to Usby. Traveling violation. Linda yeah. Miles had the call. She's joined by Karen Prado and Mark Resch officiating our game tonight. And 25 points per game, best in the conference with freshman. He's on pace to break the Florida State freshman scoring record. More on that later. Valenzuela with the scoop. Usby volleyballs it around, bounces on the end line and saved by North Carolina. That was Tiana Key at the other end. Kelly hit Right on cue, Tom. That was in the open. Deja Kelly, she loves to get to the free throw line, and she will draw contact him right here. She just takes it full court, puts her head down, and says, hey, I've got a smaller player on me. She's trailing. I'm going to take that in and one. Deja Kelly doing an excellent job with upper body strength, getting to the rack, and closing the lead down to three. Completing the old school three-point play in the first points. In the box score for Deja Kelly, who averages just over 15 points per game, sixth best of the ACC, and tops for this target team. Gordon directs some traffic. Inside two and a half minutes to go in our first quarter. Offensive foul as Gordon was driving and kicking. The defense was superb for UNC on that rotation. Right here, you see Gordon kick that ball out and finds O'Brien in the corner. But that defensive pressure that was put on by UNC right there was absolutely perfect and caused that turnover. And the cap off was taking the charge at the end. Her second foul, so Gordon had to go to the Wyckoff bench. The Jetty has come in to replace her. And the rebound from Myers, who's also in there. 32 in black. Valencia Myers. The Jetty crosses over left hand. Couldn't calculate the angle. Backed away by Osprey. Hills in transition. And Eva Hodges right there taking it inside. And Todd Williams for the three and knocks that one down. Go on the first. Jetty again to the left hand. Once again, the angle's not there. Myers cleans it up. And right there, the crowd wanted to travel, but the referee saying, hey, the ball was probbled by the defense, so technically she can catch that back. Kelly hesitation, distribution, and an easy two for Usby. One of the top ten players in the league or in the ACC in assists, and we told you in the open, when she's not looking for her own shot, she's an excellent facilitator. As Latson goes straight to the rack and draws the foul, he's gonna head to the line for two. But right here in transition, Todd Williams knocks that one down in the face of the freshman. And on the other end, yeah, Deja Kelly finding Utsby draws the two defenders. Nice pass down low to find her. Four points for Usby. Latson at the free throw line at the other end. For the Seminoles. Despite the miss, she had 21 points in the win against Miami, the most recent game for Florida State. She went 10 for 10 from the free throw line. And she shoots 83% of the season. So a miss is a rarity for Tania Latson. That's impressive. 83% in free throws, and she shot a lot of free throws so far this season. About 107 free throws for Latson. And that was her first point, that free throw. 
Todd Williams tried to drop it low in a congested area, knocked away. A couple of players go to the deck, and the Knolls come away with it. Yeah, I want to be a little more selfish on that one. Didn't completely draw on the two defenders, and they were able to get that steal. Jetty, tough shot. She was leaning to the left on that shot. One dribble pull up. Nice look by Bajetti. And her upper body strength is another player that just really impresses me for her size. Senior from Helsinki, Finland, who had 15 points in the win against the Canes. She averages double digits with 10. And now some overzealous defending from Bajetti. She picked up her first personal. And Bajetti's a, a competitor. Like, she's a very aggressive guard that loves to compete. She's not going to back down from any competition. And then Bajetti fouls the fifth on the team of the quarter, so that'll send Kelly to the line for two free throws. Must be back into the ball game. Todd Williams to the bench. Deja Kelly, 15 points in the loss to the Wolverines. Last week in Charlotte, she was 11 of 13 from the free throw line. So 13 of her 15 points came from the stripe. Michigan did a good job of limiting what UNC could do. I mean, we already said it, but Coach Benghar couldn't even recognize her own team, and either could I on the station when I was watching it. Trying to get up by to 17 eight. points at halftime. Got it down to six. They did. He ended up losing by eight, 76 68. Long rebound. That'll be the end of the first quarter. As Destiny Adams grabbed it. So after one quarter, we are all tied. The Knowles tried to extend their lead midway through the quarter. North Carolina comes back with three balls, and we're tied at 22. Todd Williams, who's tasked to take down the other player's best player and defend them, limit what they can do. And she's been doing a good job switching up top and limiting what lads can do. And the help side defense has also been impressive from Florida State. Inside, and the left is good. Key has two for North Carolina. Good look there by Todd Williams to find the open player. A little disruption on defense and miscommunication Florida State. Kelly deflects it away and gathers it. On the run, fancy dribble. Trying to carve her way to the rim, and that one gets knocked away. And here comes Latson. I almost wish she would have just finished at the rim. She took the ball, made a good, a few good nifty moves. But Jetty, that's off the mark. Free throws upcoming. Good work inside by Timpson. AK Timpson has just been so aggressive. But back to this bucket, the pretty look over the top of two defenders, the miscommunication from Florida State's defenders down there. They don't switch on that screen, and it gives Key a wide open layup. 66% of the season. Simpson at the free throw line, the sophomore from Edison, Georgia. Nine players for the Knowles got into the game in the first quarter, and eight of them scored. Multiple players who can score at multiple levels on both of these teams. I'm going to keep saying it because the keys were right on. Seven points for Timpson. She averages almost 14 per game. In fact, she almost averages a double-double with the 14 points and nine boards. On the end line and out of bounds. And that was key trying to make the move, the fourth turnover of the game for North Carolina. Key, another post that's just been getting in there. And we mentioned in the first quarter, I love the post battle. Now you've got K.K. Timpson who's going to be guarded by Destiny Adams. So they're just taking turns trying to slow down Timpson's activity level down to the post. Hodgson back into the lineup for North Carolina. There's number 10 in white. That's one of the two threes that they've made. The Jetty launching. And beyond the arc. Usby. She lost it. Might have been poked away by the quick hands of Massengill. Yeah, good defense right there by Massengill to not allow the easy two in transition by Usby. It's back. And us 
Ashby is on the move, but Massengill again with the nifty hands gets an applause from Brooke Wyckoff. And she's trying to explain to her teammates, hey, call me before you pass the ball to be a little miscommunication on offense from FSU. Great hustle there. And the Knowles will have possession as Usby appeared to have a clear path to the bucket. I think the normal ways that UNC scores, they've kind of been taken off guard. So Florida State's done a good job of limiting how they can score. And on the other end also, because they've taken away lots. And so both teams doing a good job limiting the best players on both squads. Around the perimeter, this is an open three attempt and the miss from Howard. Usby hit the net. Timpson picked up the foul, her second. Tom, when you play in the ACC and you're not having a good shooting night, right? You're not going to always make every shot. Sometimes your shot's going to get blocked. But how you can control the game and keep yourself in it is with your defense. And Usby right there did an excellent job. She didn't sulk because she missed the shot down here, but she got down and she took that charge. And now the ball is back in UNC's favor. So North Carolina shooting 47% as a team. 37% from the floor for Florida State. A speed free throw line. And that's how you get yourself back into a defense first, and that'll spur your offense. Do what you can do, control what you can control. Florida State just two of its last ten in field goal attempts. That gets poked away. Todd Williams tried to knock that away, and it'll stay with the goals. And right here, Lisa Usby just says, hey, I'm going to do this one little dribble, pullback jumper over Valencia Meyer. She doesn't close out well enough, and it rattled in, but it went in. Latson down the lane, lost the handle. That is North Carolina basketball, and seven turnovers in the first half for Florida State. Tonight, Latson had another game earlier this season where she didn't really score in the first half, came back and put up some big numbers in the second half. So for her, it's going to be a game of adjustments. How was the defense playing you and how can you get your points off and get more production? Well, she scored 34 points on two occasions so far this season. Hudson offline. Usby tracks it down in the corner in front of the Florida State bench. Kelly's pass was deflected. Latson. Hudson on her hip. That bounces out. The struggles continue for Latson and the frustrations. And then Kelly got bumped by Massingill. But you know what's impressive, Tom? And when I look at Latson's face, I see nothing change. She's missed some shots. She's a little frustrated, but her face has been the same. And one thing that Coach Wyckoff and their director of ops told me earlier is one word to describe her is discipline. She doesn't get too high or too low. And then we looked into her background. She's a military kid. So that makes a lot of sense where her discipline comes from and how composed she is. She lists her hometown as Miami, Florida. She went to high school in Plantation, Florida at American Heritage High School. Also in Atlanta for high school, lived in Hawaii. So she is well-traveled, poised young woman and a leader for this Florida State team as a freshman this season. What was that hometown again? Miami, Florida. 305 stand up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, if you, you can't tell, about. that's where I was born and raised. Goodness gracious. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting to note, though, she has really traveled all over the country and Use the experiences to her advantage, although right here she'll be whistled for the personal foul. That'll be her first. There's a little expression on that one. She smiled a little bit on that foul. Couldn't quite control her body on the inbounds. Was going for the steal. Still just the one point for Latson. Hodgson just spun off. Myers got it. And credit Valencia Myers right there for that missed shot. Her length affected the way that shot went up. And then she went and got the rebound and draw the foul. So great job there by the vet, the fifth year for the Seminoles. Remember, after the first quarter, we were tied 22 all. Florida State, by my math, just one point so far in the second quarter. Gordon, runner going for style points. Myers over the top. Adams just picked up another foul, her second personal, number 20 in white for North Carolina. And Desi Adams, 
or Valencia Myers, should I say, just went up over the head of Destiny Adams, who was in fact boxing out, but Myers just beat her to the punch. Good job there getting up over the defense and grabbing that rebound. How about Valencia Myers playing in her 126th collegiate basketball game and missing close? Had to take a step back this season from that starting position, but she's one of the players who didn't go to the transfer portal for their fifth year. Uxby, or Uxby, should I say, takes on two defenders and knocks that one down. So as we cross the six-minute threshold of the second quarter, Uxby has eight points, and North Carolina has its largest lead of the game. Florida State led by as many as eight back in the first quarter. Valenzuela can't save it. And Brooke Wyckoff is looking for answers. And I'm not trying to play favorites, but I just love the way Usby plays. She takes on not one, but two defenders on the interior. Actually goes into the defense, which I wouldn't advise, but hey, she's good enough to get up over both of those defenders and finish. So Michaela Timpson is sitting on that Florida State bench. She has two personal fouls, seven points in the game. She is the leading scorer and three of four from the floor but not part of the lineup right now for the Seminoles. A speed, a soft entry got knocked away. But Jetty cut off by the defending of Kelly. Dangerous pass. Valenzuela. Excellent boxing out right there by everybody on UNC squad. It allows Deja Kelly to in transition, take it all the way to the rim and dish it off to us before the easy two. Alyssa Usby in the double digits with 10 points. 10th time this season. She's got the double figures and the 45th time in her career at North Carolina. She made her 61st straight start tonight. That bounces out right to Usby. Good move, though, by Gordon to stop and pop over the defense. Rattled in and out. Kelly looking over at Coach Banghart. Last two years, she's taken this program to the NCAA tournament, the Sweet 16, a season ago for North Carolina. Shot clock at three. Must be trying to beat the Excellent. buzzer. Excellent. Excellent ball movement. They didn't panic, took it down to the end of the shot clock and got the smart shot, Tom. And that's something that Coach Banghart was telling us earlier today, that she doesn't want her players to just play fast. She wants them to play smart and fast at the same time. Not the only entry from Valenzuela. Poole deflected it. Here's Kelly. From the corner, Paris. That was a three attempt. But Jenny ran it down, and then Poole ran into her. Paris takes that shot. The only newcomer, but right here, Deja Kelly just takes it all the way in transition and finds Usby for the easy two. Puts you. And all of the points have come from Alyssa Usby. Usby, the biggest reason why the Tar Heels are now in front. They took away some of what Deja Kelly could do. But Alyssa Usby has just been on point, finding a way to get into the rack right there. Takes it on the best shot blocker from FSU. And right there, Deja Kelly, we told you she was a great facilitator where she finds Usby for the easy two underneath. And that one right there wasn't too easy. Takes it on two defenders, draws the contact. But Usby constantly moving, versatile, never standing still. And that's why she's open. And she is tonight's Hardy's star to watch. Add those five rebounds as well and six of eight from the floor. She does shoot 51% of the season. That is fourth best in the ACC. And she's keeping it up tonight against the Knowles. And look at those rebounds. Five rebounds already. We're not even at halftime. She averages 9.3 rebounds a game. So that means she's almost averaging a double-double in points rebounds. That's pretty impressive. When the teams played last year, she had a double-double. That was in Tallahassee. She had 12 points and 10 rebounds, and that was a win at Florida State for North Carolina, 64-49. Her teammate Deja Kelly had 26 points in the winning effort. And I found this really interesting about Usby. In high school, she played positions one through five. She played point guard to post, and that's why she's so good and so versatile and can score at multiple positions, multiple levels. Despite the fact that North Carolina won the game between the teams last year, Florida State has won six of the last seven in the series. 
their one and only meeting this year. The ACC regular season play as we start the road to Greensboro, North Carolina in the ACC Women's Tournament. Three-point attempt is all met, and Florida State really needed that one from Gordon. They had just one point so far in the quarter before that three. Yeah, that should definitely ignite that offense. UNC doing a good job of limiting what they can do. But Jetty couldn't get the shot to go. But the three from Gordon goes. Fourth made three of the game for Florida State. Now a chance off the North Carolina miss. Gordon again. Maria Gordon, sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. That bounces off. Usby chases it down. Couple players tired. A lot of running going on as Kennedy Todd Williams puts up the three, doesn't get it to go. But Usby with the rebound, hairballs it. A little too soft on that touch. Ball going back to Seminole's way. Maxine Gill. Down low, Myers. Good hustle. And she got fouled. Valencia Myers with the scream after the shot. Takes that one to the chest right here in transition, running the floor, does a good job rim running, and goes right into the chest of Key. Gives her a little yell at the end of that, but excellent, excellent toughness by Valencia Myers, the fifth year for the Seminoles. First foul on Key. Four points for Myers as she stands at the free throw line. It's a 71% free throw shooter this year for Florida State. Myers was Brooke Wyckoff's 2019 Wyckoff Player of the Year. Now Wyckoff is her head coach, so it means a lot. Myers Excellent. knocked that one away. Rolls on the baseline. She knocked it away from Key. There was a foul on the play. So Myers picked up the foul her first. I didn't really see where that foul came in at, but I, I thought Myers did an excellent job of cutting off the baseline and not allowing Key to drive to the rim. Final two minutes of our first half. That's Kelly. Deja Kelly starting to heat up, allowing her other teammates to do their thing, and now she has a chance to get herself going. That's seven points for Kelly. Latson got time. it back, and it bounced off. How about a third chance? She got fouled on the play, scored the basket. You know what, Tom? I'm going to just say she wants to up her stats by getting more rebounds. <laughs> Because Denia laps it right here. First of all, the hang time. Looks like she's got to dust that one. Duncan, excuse me, but gets not one but two rebounds over defenders and completes the and one. Now she has to try and knock down this free throw while the shot clock is stopped. So with 1.47 to go in the second quarter, Maxson makes her first field goal of the game. Can't finish it off. Myers got it back. Goes right back to the rim. And she got fouled. Challenge Zelaya. Valencia Myers doing an excellent, excellent job being tough on the interior and battling down low with UNC's post. They've had a lot of rotation down there in the post looking for an answer between Myers and KK Thompson. Or Timson, excuse me. Myers left with her third personal, excuse me, going to the bench was Adams. Myers is at the free throw line. Coming up at halftime, the recap of seventh ranked Virginia Tech at Clemson. And the surprising result there, perhaps. First half highlights and analysis from Tabitha Turner, the former Georgia Tech standout. And we're so glad that you're with us for ACC basketball. We want to wish everyone happy holidays and a happy new year. Deja Kelly is now in double digits with 10 points with the and one three-point shot. Nice ball movement, passes it right back to the right side. And Coach Whitecock calls it out and says, hey, three-point shooter, but too little, too late. Deja Kelly knocks that one in. Deja Kelly does so many things well. Three-point shooting is really the only deficiency so far this season. That's just her seventh made three of the year. And but she makes big four threes. Point play. It's big threes, though. That that's was what a she big makes. One. And she's got 11 points, so that's double figures for the ninth time this season. 
and the 50th time in Kelly's career to get the double digits. And she did it with a little bit of flair out of that corner in front of the Knowles bench on a four-point play. 115 to go on the game clock. Shot clock is inside of 10. The Jetty likes to go left, can't convert. The Jetty's put up a few floaters tonight as Ty Williams puts a floater up of her own and almost gets her on rebound, but Bajetti just a little too short, a little too hard on some of those floaters, trying to get him up over those taller defenders. And Bajetti is now one of eight from the floor at just two points. But she ain't gonna stop defending. That's what she's not gonna stop doing. <laughs> it bounces off in the three attempt from Howard. She's the three-point specialist for Florida State. Good rotation there by Florida State's defense. They stayed, but Jetty stayed with the man, even though the ball's gonna stay at UNC's end, but they did a good job being disruptive defensively and limiting what the Tar Heels could do on that possession. Heels led by as many as nine here in this quarter. It's a five-point lead in the final 30 seconds. Look at the hedge, look at the... You got to get out there quicker. So, so Valencia Myers, the first step was pretty quick, but that second step seems like she's a little bit tired out there. But when you hedge as a post, you got to hedge hard and cut off that first step. Otherwise, you're going to get that foul call every time. So that'll be two shots for Kelly. North Carolina, 17 of 20 in free throws in the loss to Michigan in their most recent game. 12 points now, Deja Kelly. Perfect from the free throw line. Perfect, five of five. Likes to draw you in and get that contact. <laughs> I, was, I was not going to say that. I jinxed it. I always like to add that tidbit after the player. <laughs> my bad, That's Deja. just my preference. My bad. That's all right. Don't be bad. The <laughs> problem is, as we are courtside, she might have heard she that. That's the deal. Who that now to get her? I don't want her to know again. <laughs> Latson takes a look at the clock. Only about a half a second difference. She will drive. Kelly came over for the help D. There was a foul call. Hodgson was in the vicinity. which will pick it up for North Carolina. That's her first for Eva Hodgson. Yeah, help side defense a little bit too late. Latson has that first quick step. She just rounded the corner. And the help side was a little bit too late. It's more like it for Latson. Four points now after the free throw. She came into the night with 105 free throw attempts, second most in the country. And she's got two from the strike with nine seconds to go to cut the lead to four. I'm just happy that Valenzuela and Valencia Myers are not on the floor anymore because I was getting the names. <laughs> I was like, that's not fair. <laughs> We still have a half to go. What a screen. Mm. And it results in two. Right before the horn, 41-35. Zelaya set the screen, and it led to points. Love it. Coach Banghart's team went on the road in Tallahassee last season and won for the first time since 2014 at the Tucker Center. Teams last played in Chapel Hill in 2021, early February. And that was a win for Florida State, 61-51. In fact, that was while Brooke Wyckoff was the interim head coach. Latson is wide open. Miscommunication somewhere defensively from UNC. And that's the player that FSU is going to try to get going. She knocks down the first one for the Seminoles of the half. Seven points for Latson, knocked around, deflected, and Florida State has it. Latson again. Bajetti hoisting the three. Somehow oh, she got the ball back. Good hustle underneath the hoop by Howard. And it results in a three pointer. That's Latson. First five points of the half, and already that puts Latson in double digits. She was at five less than two minutes ago, less than a minute ago. It's 9.08 left in this one. <laughs> Kelly comes out of the corner. 
Shot clock is at 10 for Usby. Jumper in the paint. Massengill a rebound. Smart shot, but a little too hard for Usby. Had Bajetti defending her, was going to pass that one, but decided to take the shot. Timson, the turnaround came up short. Here's Usby. Timson had those two fouls early in the game. Probably a little rusty. As Todd Williams does the nice little one dribble pull up jumper, nothing but net. Seven points for her. That's three of eight from the floor. That includes a three point basket. Howard was cutting to the rim right into Todd Williams. And this shot by Kennedy Todd Williams is a nice little pump fake, gets Howard in the air, just takes her time and knocks that one in. And that's why you pump fake, Tom. You got somebody taller coming out there at you? Give him a little pump fake. Kelly hit the deck and a whistle. Looked like she got tangled up with the jetty. Fouls on Kelly. Deja Kelly saying. I ain't touching. <laughs> but both of them, I mean, they're going to compete. They're both competitors. They're still mixing it up in the paint a little bit here. Jetty for Kelly. 25 for North Carolina. A little trash talk between the two players. Okay. So, Karen Prado with some words of advice to those two players. She's joined by Mark Resch and Linda Miles. Our officials for this evening's game underneath the jetty. Kelly Hodson combining defensively. It goes out of bounds. North Carolina basketball. And Eva Hodgson does an excellent job. Health side defense. Coming to Kelly's defense right here. Blocks the shot. And Bajetti in frustration fouls. Hodgson who just hits the deck pretty hard. And Hodgson, one of those players who's credited with getting into the weight room this past offseason. Just so strong up top. Todd Williams. Carolina gets another chance. Todd Williams. Excellent ball movement down there. at Massengill for Florida State. You don't see her in the screen just yet, but comes up limping exits or enters the screen kind of late. And Brooke Wyckoff's going to take that time out to give Massengill a bit of a break. So we'll take a time out. It is a three point game in the Carolina lead. The Knowles and the Tar Heels with seven and a half minutes to go in the third. with her team trailing by three. She came up the court favoring that left ankle and it's being heavily taped at the moment. And we didn't see in the moment what happened, but right there in the replay, you see her left ankle twist on Anya Poole's foot as Poole is running the other way. Just an inadvertent twist in the ankle. No kind of foul play. Right now, she's, after it's taped up, she's trying to walk it off and keep it moving, because what you don't want to do is sit down and allow that to inflate. A little wincing there as well. Looks like she's in a little bit of pain, but a good sign to see her back up and moving and running behind the bench. She's going to be tired. She's taking a lot of laps back there. Look, she's still going. <laughs> she doesn't want to come out of this game, and I don't blame her. I don't blame her either. It's tense, fast-paced ACC women's basketball game. Here's a little nugget for you, Tom. Madison Gill has now played, and you know, the voting isn't completely over as far as, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? I'm waiting with anticipation. But, but no, so she's now played with two different players who have so far swept the Rookie of the Week honors. So she played at Kentucky alongside Ryan Howard, who now plays in the WNBA for the Atlanta Dream. Howard and Usby diving after that one. And and a good job by Usby poking that one away and both players getting on the ground and that's how you keep yourself in it right there. Usby, an excellent job being the first to the floor. Gets the foul, but 
I love the tenacity, the drive that she's got, the competitive nature. I have a feeling her coach feels the same yeah. way. She'll accept that <laughs> foul. When that sort of effort is expended. Latson, that'll fall. Now, those were bouncing out in the first half. That one drops for Latson. She looks like she's kind of settled in just a little bit, right? She had a couple breaks that were just uncharacteristic, some missed layups in that first half, but she's got seven in the third quarter alone. 12 total points for the league's leading scorer, Kelly, along that baseline. Hodgson around the edge, got two defenders in the air, and scores. It's the patience for me. I'm loving the pump face. She just exaggerated the nice little pump and spins around and puts it in. Excellent, excellent footwork by Eva Hodgson. She's got seven points for the senior from Rings, New Hampshire. Poole with a box out and an outlet to Kelly. On the run. Kennedy, Todd, Williams with a miss. She's getting closer and closer. Had a couple threes not go in. That one rimmed in and out. O'Brien a little bit out of control. And the race continues. That one nearly poked away by Latson on Todd Williams. And that was a good foul for Latson to take, but she has been on fire to start this third quarter. Takes that in over the taller defender in Todd Williams. And on the opposite end, Eva Hoshin just does a good pump fake, some excellent footwork, gets the defender in the air, and creates space to get that shot off. Just over six minutes to go in our third quarter. Husby, unselfish play from Hoshin to feed Husby. And the hang time from Usby as well. She just did a nice little scoop under to the rim. Went underneath the defense, so it was out of the reach of the shot blocker. Latson has all seven points in the quarter for Florida State. Three of three from the floor. She ends up with a basketball. Wants a three and knocks it down. <laughs> it's the swag for me. I mean, she's turned it up 200% in this third quarter. Pulls Florida State to within two. Gordon picked up the foul. That's her third. Let's take a look at the motor on Usby right here. Good pass from Hodges, but Usby with the hang time. Just hangs in there so KK Timpson can't get it. And Ladson, who's been heating up in this third quarter, looks at her defender and says, yeah, that was nothing but that. That's it. 15 points in the game for Latson. Usby's got 14. Todd Williams. Ooh. Ran into the defense of Timpson. That was a volleyball spike, first of all. So I played outside hitter, and that looked like a volleyball <laughs> hit. Ty Williams takes it, and KK Timpson says, not in your house when I'm in the lane. Kelly scoops it up too strong. Timpson deflected it. O'Brien now. Dropped it off with Chetty, and... Hodgson got a piece of Majetti and sent her flying to the floor. Majetti looked like she took a hit. Comes up wincing, holding her neck. Takes a hard fall, but excellent job just leaking out in transition and pushing the pace so that the defense can't catch and play five on five. I have that as three block shots now for Timpson as Todd Williams goes to the Courtney Banghart bench for North Carolina. But Jetty's at the free throw line. Simpson averages 2.3 blocks per game, sitting second in conference play. So you know what she can do. On my scout, I have shot blocker in all caps <laughs> with an exclamation mark. Look at me. Isn't that all caps? Isn't that what the kids say? Look out. She's going to block it. Jetty at the free throw line. Her third year of the Florida State program after transferring from Arizona State for number four in black. Garnet and gold. Kelly. Timpson took it away from Key. Came down a little off balance, but does a good job centering herself, finding her PG. Chance for the Knowles to take the lead. We're tied at 47. Excellent. We're untied. Thanks Excellent. to Timpson. Timpson had three defenders on her. Again, caught the ball off balance. Regains composure and takes on all three of them. Nine points for Timpson. Hodgson lining up a three ball. 
Timpson trying to deflect it to a teammate. Osby grabbed it. And then Osby with the takedown of Taylor. And she tried to get away. She tried, but Usby was like, nah, listen, I got to get that back. But right here, KK Timpson is doing a little bit of everything. Takes on three defenders. Puts Start of his basketball career, we hope. 49-47. How about Florida State on a 7-0 run? Take their first lead since they led 22-21 right at the end of the first quarter. Because we were tied at 22 after the first quarter. And they're taking a look at the previous play here, Tabitha. Looking to see if Usby's foul, which was ruled a common foul at first, but looking to see right here, she gets stripped by Taylor O'Brien. Then as O'Brien goes for the ball, just grabs and brings her to the ground to stop the pace or the transition layup, but they're trying to see if there was anything excessive with Mark, that foul. Yeah, Mark Resch came over to us and said he'd give us the update. That's Karen Prado at the scorer's table. So if you heard the announcement, the foul upgraded to an intentional foul, and maybe Mark Resch will come by and give us the lowdown. He's going to be the official to put it in play. And I, I agree with that. It was a little excessive and unnecessary. And I understood what Usby was trying to do. She was trying to stop the ball from being pushed in transition, which is something that Florida State loves to do. So Aaron Howard is at the free throw line. And we'll take one more look at this as Usby gets the ball stripped from her by Taylor O'Brien, just excessively grabs her around the waist and around that left thigh to stop the transition layup from happening. So I think the refs made the right call by upgrading that. So a couple of technical free throws and the ball for Timpson. That's off the back iron. Must be the board. Timpson a little off balance on that shot, but a very athletic looking shot. That was the 10th rebound for Usby. So she's got a double-double with 14 points and 10 boards. It goes out of bounds and will stay at the center of the floor. And right now, Anya pool, she did a good job of assessing where Timpson was on her backside, but you got to give her a little pump fake. You know she's the second leading blocker in the ACC and has four tonight already. Shot clock at 10 for North Carolina. Kelly around the pool screen. Needs to take a glance at that clock. Pool got it away. The ball did not hit the rim. That is a shot clock violation against North Carolina and their 10th turnover of the ball game. And again, credit Timpson's defense right there. She was in the face of Anya Pool on her tight defensively and affected that entire shot. Florida State is on a 9-0 run over the last two minutes and change. Entry on the block, Timpson trying to go around Poole. Bounces off, couple of players hit the deck, struggle for the basketball. I like it, I like it, Tom. I like when players get on the floor and use their aggressiveness to fight for possession of the ball. Adams and Timpson in there trying to fight for that basketball. And Anya Poole affected Timpson's shot on that, got a little bit of it on the top, Timpson gets the rebound, but it hits the floor, and her and Destiny Adams both dive on the floor using their hustle points to try to get possession. Goes to the Tar Heels in their favor. Tar Heels playing their first conference game of the season. They're the last team to start conference play. Florida State. 1-0 in conference with its win against Miami most recently. That's cool to miss. The Tar Heels taking their bye in the Jumpman Invitational against Michigan last Wednesday. Fantastic collegiate event in Charlotte, North Carolina. Spectrum Center. Usby comes up with her 10th rebound of the game. 11th, excuse me. Kennedy Todd Williams. Nifty dribble, got the shot away, and was bumped in the act of shooting. 
Ty Williams just has some excellent hang time when she's in the air. She's very good and patient with the ball. Does a nice little move right there and draws a foul, but it was the hang time that drew in the contact. So Timpson and Bajetti right behind her, leaving the lineup for Brooke Wyckoff. Todd Williams is at the free throw line. Her teammate Alyssa Usby has her sixth double-double of the season. Eight points for Todd Williams. O'Brien in her second game back had a lower body injury and missed 10 straight games, played the first three, was averaging around 16 points a game. Massengill in the corner, Howard got it. Preserving the possession inside of two minutes to go in the quarter. O'Brien hops into the paint and scores. Multiple players who could score at multiple levels. O'Brien coming back just gives them another threat on the offensive end and another defensive prowess. First field goal of the game for O'Brien. Poole in traffic sent it to Todd Williams. Angular rebound Poole. Kelly, mid-range. Myers able to shovel it to Latson as she was falling. Latson pulls up. Mid-range at the other end, and it's on net. It's the touch that's different. She had put up a couple of those shots in the first half that just hit the backboard, hit the rim really hard. Almost seemed like she was out of rhythm, and now, after halftime, she's just found that rhythm. 17 points for Latson now. In this third quarter, as Kennedy Ty Williams gets one of them to go. She's been trying that three point shot all night long. She's two of eight tonight. 11 points for her. Easy board for Usby, building on that double double. In fact, she's now five straight games with double figure rebounds, and that's Latson and Kelly who both end up on the court. And right here, good ball movement by the Seminoles. And Taylor O'Brien, who missed 10 games this season, gets a nice one to go on the interior. And on the other side, Ladson just with a nice pull-up jumper in transition, nothing but net. And look at that. She's got a little bit of emotion on her on that one and takes the foul right here on this one. So she's just been heating up. That's her third foul tonight, sends Kelly to the line. But Latson just been the difference for Florida State in the second half. She's got 17 right now. She scored 20 or more 13 times this season. She had five at halftime. Five. That's 12 points in the third quarter, and we still got 40, 40 seconds left. Kelly just got the double digits, too, with that free throw. She's got 10. Nine times the double figures for Deja Kelly in the 50th time of her career. Brian weaving through defenders. Everything but the finish. She kept it alive. Brian could score, as you mentioned, in three of the four games that she had played in prior to the injury. She had scored in double digits. A lot of offense that she brings. Still a little rusty. Not back to where she was. Chocolock is all the way down to one. They won't get it away. I don't think anyone knew or had shot clock awareness on that. And Latson is just telling her team, hey, we got it, we got it. Because she knows that was probably her job as the point guard to know time and score situations. But no player for the Seminoles saw the shot clock winding down. And that's the end of the third. Latson for Florida State at 12 points and made five of six shots in the quarter. And Florida State has a four-point lead. We're on to the fourth. For the bench production that's coming off. Gordon has six as well. And Gordon as well, yes. Yeah. It's a couple of three-pointers. In fact, she's attempted two and made them both. And we're keeping an eye on the rebounding margin as well. Florida State leads on the boards 37-33. Also a key factor. Contributing to success in the ACC. 
Here we go. We crank up the fourth quarter here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Nice to see Madison go back in the game, too. I know she came back in in that third quarter. Still has a little limp to her. But way too important for Florida State to lose in this one. Knowles able to save it to Watson. Around the perimeter, Massengo. On target with a three. It's the ball movement for me, Tom. I mean, they found the right shot by the open player. The ball movement was able to break down the defense. Massengo was wide open and just knocks it down. Nothing but net. She's got six points. The lead is now seven. Florida State is led by as many as eight. That was back in the first quarter. He dropped it. He with a nice, strong move, takes one dribble, goes into the contact. That's her fourth point of the game. It's right on her average for the redshirt freshman from Cary, North Carolina, for Key. Massengill. Timson had a hand on it. Usby comes away with it. That's rebound number 13 for Usby. Threads it inside. Kennedy Todd Williams. Easy layup for Carolina. Another miscommunication defensively. Ladson stopped around the three-point line. Thought that Todd Williams' man was going to go with her. And no one was there. A one-possession game. Massengill defended and challenged by Key, and then O'Brien lost it. Two players to the deck, feisty and fighting for the basketball. O'Brien and Todd Williams, and the arrow is going to favor North Carolina. The refs cracking up on that one, but let's take a look at this transition game. Tar Heels come down with the rebound. Usby pushes in transition, finds a nice pass to Todd Williams, who's all alone, and her man was too tired. And right here, the feistiness. It's heating up, ladies and gentlemen. Both teams say no. You don't allow the other team to get that ball, even if it is a dead ball. It's about pride. Chance to tie with a three. North Carolina has only made three three-pointers on 15 attempts. Kelly tried to drive, and there was contact with Gordon. Yeah, and Gordon doesn't agree. But it's the first step. Deja Kelly does a good job attacking that first lead foot. And that's Gordon's fourth. She's going to take a seat with a little over eight minutes left in the fourth. Must be with a double-double tonight. That ball up for grabs. Todd Williams over the top. Hodgson launching the three and missing. Todd Williams on the board. Looked like Gibson knocked that one away. All I hear is Todd Williams, Todd Williams, Todd Williams. Her activity level has just been crucial for the Tar Heels. And now five blocks for Timpson after that previous sequence. Carolina fans wanted a walk. Officials did not agree. Shot clock is down to 10. The game clock inside of seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Massigo puts her hand up. ISO is the isolation. And another shot clock violation by the Seminoles. That's the second one this half. Time and score situations are crucial, especially in the fourth quarter when the game is this close. But no one's looking at the shot clock. And Gordon's back in the game with four fouls. And Bajetti's going to take a seat. Florida State with the lead. If you're the Tar Heels and Gordon's back in this game, you're giving the ball to Deja Kelly and saying attack. North Carolina has now missed its last nine three-pointers. Florida State, conversely, over two and a half minutes without points. And shooting 34% for the game, leading by three. But the good thing Florida State's been doing in their scoring drought, as Latson puts up a three and doesn't get that one to go, they've been defending well. That was a chance to tie the game for Kennedy Todd Williams out of the hot corner. Gordon pulls up. 
She misses. Latson pulls it in. Driving. Aaron Howard missed on the drive. So many chippies right at the rim missed in this one. Howard just patting herself on the chest saying, my bad, should have had that one. Key picked up the foul for North Carolina, her third. On your pool re-enters, Key goes out. This is the most post-rotation I've seen by a school, by either school in a long, long time. I haven't seen a lot of schools do a post-rotation this much, which lets you know that player with the ball in her hands right now, she is active out there. K.K. Timpson has been making UNC work in the post all night long. Gordon, catch and release for three for Florida State. And that's why the Seminoles will take the risk of leaving Gordon in the game with four fouls, because offensively, she's going to give you that. Nothing but net three. Maria Gordon, three for three from three-point distance. Must be driving and scoring for Carolina. Excellent lead pass by Kennedy Todd Williams. Let her right over the defender in the perfect spot to get it to the rack. 16 points for Rusby. Timpson inside <laughs> from Mexico. Yep. KK Timpson did a little yell at the end, and she's smiling because she already knows she got teed up by the ref for yelling in the opposition's face. And ladies and gentlemen, that happens sometimes right here. KK Timpson bodies. Usby gives her a little yell. And the ref sees it and calls the tee. As a little frustration smile on her face. No, she has to control that emotion, but that happens in the game of basketball. You get fired up, and that adrenaline starts going. She is such a reliable scorer and rebounder. That's now 12 games in a row, double-digit scoring. And Brooke Wyckoff, head coach Brooke Wyckoff, smile on her face, clapping to her players, saying, I'll take that. Thirteen points, Kennedy Todd Williams. A couple of free throws from the junior from Jacksonville, North Carolina. I don't know who's more of an X factor in this game just yet, Todd Williams or Usby. I mean, Todd Williams, it's, yes, Usby has two more points than she does, but the assists, I thought she had more than two assists because she's just been finding teammates all night long. But she's got seven rebounds in this one. Must be also compiling her 21st career double-double tonight. Hudson lets it fly. <laughs> I love that, Destiny Adams. Had to be resuscitated back to life off of Eva Hodgson's three-point shot. She's got ten points now, and it's a one-point game. Gordon. Excellent box out. Maybe it was a little too good. They're saying she wrapped her arms around the defender. And Usby picks up a foul. So it is a one-point game in the third foul against Alyssa Usby. Fool was assessed the foul and not Usby. So Usby gotcha. now with two. And Poole has three. I That's thought, been rectified. Yeah, I definitely thought the ref was referencing Usby with the wraparound of her arms on the rebound. But she was saying Anya Poole held Timpson, and Timpson could jump <laughs> to get that rebound. Usby is the leading scorer for North Carolina with 16 points. The 13 boards, the double-double, her sixth of the season. 17 points for Latson. And that leads the way. Timpson is the other double-digit scorer for Florida State. Latson, who had five points in that first half. Turnaround, Timpson hanging and scoring. Just so athletic the way she just hangs in the air. Doesn't get that first one to go. Sticks with it and just out jumps, out maneuvers the defense. 13 points for Timpson. And a three-point lead, Florida State.
immediately. And a good job by UNC recognizing, hey, we got to get the ball back to Deja Kelly. Gordon, who has four fouls, is on her. And Gordon just had to allow Kelly to do that one dribble pull up so she didn't pick up her fifth foul. 17 points for Kelly. Locks it at the other end. Gordon scooped it up. Pool. Rebound and outlet. And Latson's shot was a little bit strong on that one because she saw Deja Kelly get outside of the paint and set two feet to try to take that charge. Wanted to avoid getting that offensive foul. North Carolina down by one. Chance to take its first lead since Tar Heels led 47-46. That was Poole trying to wrestle it away from Aaron Howard. Howard inside, yep. And, and that's Howard, the first foul on Howard. Howard was late getting to her defensive position. And I thought it was a jump ball, but yeah, they called the foul. <laughs> she says to the refs, the foul was on me. <laughs> she didn't want to give it to the wrong teammate. It's just the first on Howard. <laughs> They originally awarded it to number three, Gordon, who's sitting at four fouls. So, yeah, good job by Howard speaking up, letting the refs know, hey, I did it. Shot clock to 10. Hodgson on the handle. Looking for help. Todd Williams trying to beat that shot clock. The rim's off. O'Brien in the corner. She took a tumble in that corner and went out of bounds. And the foul was on Todd Williams. I mean, the call is going to go to the aggressor, and the crowd may not like it. But O'Brien does an excellent job boxing out first off and then going for the ball. And, yeah, that's a foul. She got pushed out of bounds. She's going for the ball, and there's body contact. Todd Williams doesn't agree. But the ball is going to go to the aggressor. Lanson in tight quarters. Timpson out of bounds, and that is seminal possession. And Coach Wyckoff, right side of your screen, wanted a foul there. She's even demonstrating <laughs> right in front of Mark Resch. I, 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 I wish that we were on camera so I could re-demonstrate it, because it was mean, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> she is animated on that Florida State sideline. Taking over for the legend, Sue Semra. That's a foul against the Rose and Massinger. Massengill just pushes off with that left arm, trying to create some space. We'll take another look at it right here. Takes her off the dribble, and right there extends that left arm into the chest of Hodgson. Correct call. Once again, North Carolina with a chance to take the lead. We're inside of three minutes to go in regulation. Backdoor attempt to Usby, and she could not collaborate and grab that pass from Hodgson. Howard was late the first go around a couple plays ago. This time she gets there in time and breaks that pass up. Timpson trying to get around. Pool knocked away. Right back to Timpson. And she puts it off the glass and in. 15 points in the game. Excellent defense by Poole, but you know your teammates got to have your back as well. You got to go and get that rebound. And a foul against the Tar Heels. <laughs> I, I think that uh, the refs are calling a pretty even game because neither coach is happy <laughs> with none of these it calls. It's her third. <laughs> Both teams getting multiple offensive foul calls. Quite a few of them coming in the fourth quarter alone. We're in crunch time now. Just over two minutes to go in regulation. The Carmichael Arena inside Timpson. Feed from Watson over the front rim and in. And now 17 points for Timpson. I mean, KK Timpson, I mean, the leap. She was good last year, but the leap, the work that she's done to get in the gym and get better as O'Brien picks up the foul. Has just been excellent. The good look right here, the assist from Ladson. Timpson assesses her situation, her surroundings, and just hangs in the air over all the defenders and gets that one in. Kayla Timpson, the sophomore forward, 6'2", from Edison, Georgia. 
Last eight points have come from number 21 in black. 17 points, nine rebounds, five blocks. Well, remember against Miami in that winning effort, she had 25 points, a career high and a game high in the win against the Canes. And Miami doesn't have small posts. They've got pretty mobile bigs who can play and are experienced. They got the Pendande down there. Yep. The win on December 21st at home against Miami. Hodgson, couple of free throws. 69-66, one possession game, 150 to go. Tom, welcome to the ACC. I mean, my goodness. First ACC game of the year for North Carolina, just the second for Florida State. They dump it low, tips it in a crowd. Foul is called. Three players converged on Timpson. Yeah. And Brooke Wyckoff pleading on the sideline, where is the foul? There were literally three defenders. Adams picked up her fourth. And right here, this is how much of an impact Timpson has been making. Three defenders going for her and the ball because they know she's dangerous. So again, the fourth on Destiny Adams. And Timpson stands at the free throw line with 17 points tonight. How about the production in her last two games for Timpson. Told you that she had 25 points against Miami. Timpson now one for three from the free throw line of the game. Just 66% of the season from the strike for Timpson. She's efficient too, Tom, as she gets the second free throw to go. First in the ACC in field goal percentage. We mentioned at the top of the show, just want to reiterate how efficient she is. First in the entire conference. Kelly. The chance. Kelly reloads. Hassengill. Out leaping everybody despite that tweaking of the ankle earlier in the game. Hit a three-point shot after tweaking that ankle earlier in the game right in front of the teleprompters over here. We don't have teleprompters in front of the table. I do. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Massengill driving. Timpson high for the board. Mm. And she puts it back. She starts to put out a little yell but says, nah, I got it to you earlier in the game. Let me just hold it till after. Excellent, excellent job right there over three defenders. As Deja Kelly takes it on the defense in transition straight to the rim. Kelly's got 19. Timpson has 20. Back and forth. And now 72-68. Timpson has the last 11 points for Florida State against Courtney Banghart's team. 17 points for Latson for Florida State. And her effort tonight is the Coyote Tractor turning point. Slow start, strong finish. Only five points in that first half. They knew they had to get her going. She's been a facilitator, but in this second half, mostly a scorer. She's knocked down some three-point shots, taking it to the rack. Nice little one-dribble pull-up jumper. Saw some emotion on the face, and we were joking earlier about how she's so even killed, doesn't show a lot of emotion, but this game has really pulled it out of her. Now, she hasn't yet scored in the fourth, but overall in the game, in addition to her 17 points and a couple of made threes, she's got six rebounds and six assists. And we were talking about becoming a facilitator and helping her teammates, and she's fed Timpson on the inside on a number of occasions. She's also got six rebounds, and we were talking about if your shot's not falling, what can you can do, right? Control what you can control, and that's your effort, that's your defense, that's your hustle, that's getting on the floor after loose balls, that's squaring up, cutting off that first quick step of the opposition and not allowing them to get to the rim. It's all about how you can get yourself back into the rhythm. And tonight, Lawson did that tonight. So a timeout called on top of the timeout we just had. So Florida State will be able to advance the basketball with 45.8 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Now remember, Tom, North Carolina's only lost one game in this building. In the last 22. And the, uh, in the past That was 22. against NC State, the three-time defending champs at the ACC tournament. So they desperately want to protect their home court. And they're still ranked in the top 10. So what a win this would be for Florida State to hold on 
and beat a ranked opponent on their home floor. Well, they did it back in 2021 here against North Carolina with a 61-51 victory. Brooke Wyckoff was the interim head coach at that time. So she has a little experience, a little taste of success here at Carmichael. When we talked to her this afternoon at the shoot-around. We talked about starting ACC play early in the schedule, and Brooke Wyckoff just lit up like, I love being in this building. I've played many games here. I've coached here so much. They got that win in 2021 when she was the interim head coach on this floor. Not easy to win here, and Florida State trying to close in on victory with just over 45 seconds to go. Florida State trying to play keep away and run some time off the clock. Usby picks up her third foul of the game. A couple of shots coming up for Aaron Howard. Two for two from the line in the game for Howard. Howard not as productive from the three-point line tonight. One for six. That's only your 13th free throw attempt of the season. As Tabitha mentioned, does most of her damage usually from beyond 22 feet, one and three quarter inches away. From 15 feet away, she hits, and now six points for Howard. One of two on that trip to the free throw line. Had a couple deep threes in this game, too. Missed a couple and just kind of stopped shooting. That Virginia Tech Clemson game. You saw Duke posted a win at NC State tonight. That's Hodgson for three. Todd Williams with the follow. Immediate timeout by Florida State. Nice follow through from Todd Williams to focus in, box out, put a body on somebody, and go up and get that rebound. And right here, Hodgson puts up the three, doesn't get it to go. Nobody boxes out Todd Williams, and she just comes in and out jumps the opposition and gets the put back. She's got 16 points. She's one of four North Carolina players into double digits, led by her teammate, Daisy Kelly. Isn't that crazy how the entire top 25 is gonna be shaken up because the ACC is just so dominant? Before tonight, four teams in the top 10. Notre Dame, NC State, Virginia Tech, and this North Carolina team in the top 25 to start play tonight. Kennedy Todd Williams with her fourth personal foul. Two shots, lots of them. Three or five from the line tonight. I told you, though, she's one of the best in the ACC from the free throw line. 83%. That's what she does. She gets to the free throw line. And those will be her first two points of the quarter. And they're big. She's got 19 now. And that... Puts the lead up to five points with 34 seconds to go, and North Carolina's taking a timeout. The Hills have one left, as does Florida State, and the arrow favors the Knowles. And this is why Coach Banghart wants to take that timeout. This player, K.K. Timpson, has just been active tonight, just putting up numbers all across stat stuffing. She's blocking shots. She's putting up points. Just an excellent all-around game. Even picked up a tackle because she was so fired up, but she's just been going at the teams, the Tar Heels' best players, best defenders, and she has not been backing down. And she's kind of made the paint in Carmichael her house. Five blocks on the night, career high. She made 13 field goals against Miami. She's 9 of 14 tonight for the 20 points. First in the ACC at field goal percentage, 9 of 14 tonight. Kelly. Carhill's got a hurry. She got fouled one against O'Brien. As Courtney Banghart told us earlier today, the same thing she tells her team. You go out there and play, I'll play chess. She's been using up all these timeouts, trying to inch back into this game and gets the ball in Deja Kelly's hand to not only stop the clock, but attempt to put two into this lead. 20 points, Deja Kelly. Fourth time this season, 20 or more in the box score for Kelly. He tried to grab it. Kelly ended up with it. Lat 
Watson in the corner. They're going to try to foul her. They didn't do it. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds on the game clock, and O'Brien got fouled. Hudson and Key in the vicinity. It's going to be Hudson. Coach Banghart taking a second to have a teaching moment with Deja Kelly. Pulled her aside and said, hey, you had an open man in the corner. That wasn't the right shot. And that's what she was telling us earlier today. It's not just about putting up shots or going at a fast pace, but it's picking out the right shot by the right player at the right moment on the floor. First attempt from the line of the game for O'Brien. She's got two points. Florida State had won seven of its last eight, entering the night. One of two, O'Brien. Timeout, North Carolina. That's its last. Kayla McPherson, who's on the UNC bench, she's been sidelined so far. But McPherson literally was screaming on that last missed shot by Deja Kelly on the bench. That's how bad she wants to be out here to help her team. And that's how bad she wants her team to win. That's five for Florida State. will be at Georgia Tech on Sunday. Next home game, they'll take on Clemson. That game takes on a different look after the Tigers. Upset of number seven in the nation, Virginia Tech tonight. NC State looms on the horizon as well for Brooke Wyckoff. I mean, it's tough to take over for a legend, but when you've been on the staff for as long as Coach Wyckoff was, a seamless transition from Semrau to Wyckoff. And a player. A player under this program. Kelly had to force that inbounds. Todd Williams. Watson came away with it. Usby Fowler with 10 seconds to go. Fourth on Usby. I mean, just an overall impressive, impressive game from Florida State. They came into this building, and the game's not over just yet, but they came into this building and took on a ranked opponent in the top 10 of the nation at a school that's synonymous with Michael Jordan's name. I mean, they play in Jordan's. I just want to be on the staff so I can get a pair. <laughs> 21 points for Latson. 14 games in a row, or 12 rather, with 20 points or more for Latson. 14 times this season. That will do it. 78 71. Coach Wyckoff and the Knowles go on the road. Just like they did back in 2021, they win it here at Carmichael Arena. It's got to be something with Coach Wyckoff and how she plays chess out there. But an excellent, excellent job by the Seminoles. Credit K.K. Timpson and Tania Lotson for coming back and having that big 78-71.